Hello again. There was a time many years ago when censorship was something we associated with fascist dictatorships. We remember, for instance, the burning of books by Hitler's regime in the 1930s. More recently, the Greek junta in the late 1960s was always ready to suppress what they saw as communist propaganda. For the last half century or so, though, censorship has been something which left-wing people are a good deal keener on than anybody else. The Soviet Union, China, Cuba and North Korea being prime examples of this tendency. Lately, this desire to prevent people hearing the opinions of those with whom they disagree has been a notable feature of the left wing in Western Europe and the United States. This has been made a good deal easier by describing the views of anybody one dislikes as hate speech. Somebody thinks that men and women are different and that surgery cannot alter this fundamental fact? Whoa, transphobia right there. That's hate speech and should be forbidden. A man who questions the wisdom of unlimited and unrestricted immigration? Clearly this fellow is spreading racism and is guilty of hate speech and he should be suppressed and his views hidden. This technique has proved enormously useful in stopping those who might have a contrary view to that prevailing among academics and social workers from being heard. But it has had an unfortunate byproduct, which is that it allows lies to proliferate. Let me explain. If somebody claims that all gay men are promiscuous, then this is easy enough to disprove. All we need to do is find a single gay man living in a stable and monogamous relationship and it will at once be seen that this shows that it cannot be the case that all gay men are promiscuous. The truth, which is rather banal and mundane, is simply that some gay men are promiscuous, which anybody would have guessed anyway. In precisely the same fashion, if a man declares that all black people are stupid and lazy, then we need only point to one clever and industrious black person to demonstrate that the statement must be false. Instead, the truth is revealed that some black people are stupid and lazy. As long as we allow people to make false and misleading statements of this kind openly, then their rebuttal follows very swiftly. In other words, the man who claims that all black people are stupid and lazy will soon be revealed as either a fool or a liar. That's what happens with open debate, you see. The truth tends to come out. But as things stand, making statements of that kind, that all gay men are promiscuous or that all black people are stupid and lazy, is forbidden on many parts of the internet, such as Facebook and indeed this platform, YouTube. Somebody saying such things in public in the real world will be liable to arrest and prosecution. This is bad for the following reason. If one is prohibited from saying these things out loud in public or on the internet, then others do not have the chance to refute those claims publicly. It means that the, that kind of thing will now be forced underground and people will say them privately to those whom they know will not contradict them. In other words, mistaken ideas are able to flourish and thrive when open discussion is prevented. This is exactly what is now happening since the idea of hate speech was introduced into political discourse. The ideas themselves have not vanished, they've simply gone underground. This has ever been the danger with censorship and it is why I am opposed to it. Of course, interesting ideas will emerge from free conversation which will not happen when debate is censored. It is undeniably true that there are very clever people of Chinese heritage and also that there are stupid people of the same ancestry. The same is true of all ethnic groups. Is there any difference between the percentages at the extreme ends of the scale between different populations? That is an idea which may be false or it might be worth examining closely. Of course, some gay men are promiscuous and others are not. The same is true, of course, of heterosexuals. 
What about the averages, though? Do they differ? How many sexual partners does the average gay man have, as opposed to the average straight one? Are these figures comparable? These are all interesting points of discussion, but such honest inquiry will never be possible while the left wing are so determined to impose censorship. It's funny, because I know that there are various people who are desperate to see this channel closed down. I do not at all feel the same way about those who wish to censor me. I'm happy for them to continue in what they're doing. In fact, I cannot help but notice that all the desire for censorship these days is from left-wing politics, and right-wing people want nothing at all to do with it. This is curious and worth thinking about. Why are left-wing people so mad keen on stopping those with whom they disagree from having a voice?